We are used to seeing things from a particular point of view. That is, from a particular frame of reference. And things look different to us under different circumstances. At the moment, things look... You look peculiar. You're upside down. No, you're the one that's upside down. No, you're upside down. No, I'm not. He's the one that's upside down, isn't he? Well, let's pass for it. All right. Okay. You lose. He's the one that's really upside down. You better come into my frame of reference now. and the building is firmly attached to the earth. Of course, the reason for having three rods is that the position of any object, such as this ball, can be specified using these three reference lines. This reference line points in the direction which we call up, which is a different direction here than it is on the other side of the earth. And these two reference lines specify a plane, which we call horizontal or level. In this film, we're going to look at the motion of objects in this Earth frame of reference and in other frames of reference moving in different ways relative to the Earth frame. Well, let's look at a motion. This steel ball can be held up by the electromagnet. Now I'm going to open the switch and you watch the motion of the ball. The ball is accelerated straight down by gravity along a line parallel to this vertical reference line. As you can see, the electromagnet is mounted on a cart that can move. And I'm going to do exactly the same experiment that Dr. Hume did, but this time, while the cart is moving at a constant velocity. The cart is pulled along by a string which is wound around this phonograph turntable, and that pulls it with a constant velocity. When the cart passes this line, the ball is released, as you can see. I'm going to start the cart down at the end of the table, so that by the time it gets to this point, I can be sure it's moving with a constant velocity. Now, I want you to watch right here, so that you will see the ball falling. I think you can see that the ball landed in exactly the same position that it did before when Dr. Hume did the experiment with the cart fixed. But this time, the ball could not have fallen straight down. Let me show you why. The ball was released. At that point, if it had fallen straight down, because the cart moves on in the time it takes to fall, it would have landed back here somewhere. But it didn't. Now I'm going to do the experiment again. And this time, I'm going to let you watch the motion through a slow motion camera, which is fixed here. As the cart moves by, the ball will fall, and you can watch in the slow motion camera. I'll show you this again. This time, there'll be a line on the film so that you can see the path. I think that you can see that the path of the ball is a parabola. But all of this has been in a frame of reference fixed to the Earth. How would this motion look in a frame of reference which was moving along with the cart? Frame of reference like that. Well, so that you can see what it looks like, I'm going to fix this slow motion camera so that it moves with the cart. Like this. I'm going to do the experiment again. And incidentally, I'll start it, and then I'm going to stand here so that when the ball falls, you will have something which is fixed as a reference point. In 
a moving frame of reference, I think you could see that the path of the ball is a vertical straight line. It looks exactly the same as it did before when Dr. Hume did the experiment with the cart fixed. If we were moving along in this frame of reference and we couldn't see the surroundings, then we wouldn't be able to tell by this experiment that we were moving at a constant velocity. As a matter of fact, we wouldn't be able to tell by any experiment that we were moving at a constant velocity. I'm going to do the experiment once more, and this time I'm not going to stand here behind the ball as it falls so that you won't have any fixed reference frame. As you're concerned, that time, the cart wasn't necessarily moving at all. That time, when you couldn't see the background, then I think perhaps it was harder for you to realize that you were in a moving frame of reference. The important thing to realize here is that all frames of reference moving at constant velocity with respect to one another are equivalent. We call a frame of reference in which the law of inertia holds an inertial frame. The law of inertia holds in the Earth frame of reference, so it is an inertial frame. The cart moving at constant velocity relative to the Earth is an inertial frame, but the cart which is accelerated is not an inertial frame. So far, we've been talking about frames of reference moving at a constant velocity relative to one another. Now I'm going to do the experiment with the dropping ball again, only this time the cart will be accelerated relative to the Earth frame. These weights will fall and give the cart a constant acceleration. I'll put the ball up. And then I will release it. The motion is very fast, and I want you to watch at the point where the ball is released from the fixed camera. Ready? I don't know whether you saw that or not, but the path of the ball was the same as it was before. Only this time it landed in a different spot. This is because the car kept on accelerating in this direction as the ball was falling. Now I'm going to let you see it again with the slow motion camera fixed onto the cart. This time you saw the ball moving off to one side and not following down the vertical reference line as it did in the constant velocity case. Now suppose you were in this accelerated frame of reference. How could you explain this motion? Because the frame of reference that we're used to living in is one in which the law of inertia holds, when we go into a non-inertial frame, like the frame of the accelerated car, our belief in the law of inertia is so strong but when we see an acceleration of the ball sideways, we think there is a force causing it. 